yes guys welcome back welcome back to the channel this is like take five or six at this point youtube have been trying to limit everything the last 24 hours but we did eventually get the content out I'm saying that because if you guys are watching this, we obviously got it out. But I hope everybody's been enjoying the international break. Hope everybody's been enjoying the mental break away from Chelsea. Hope everybody's a lot less stressed, even though I'm seeing a lot, a lot of pot stirring. I want to try and keep the monetization, so I'm going to call it pot stirring from journalists over the last 24, 48 hours. Yesterday, the discourse was, could Chelsea be getting relegated? Could we be getting docked points? Could we be at risk, even though we haven't been charged of anything yet? And all the other BS, ifs, buts and maybes surrounding Chelsea. Today, we're talking about stickers. Yes, that's where we are. We're talking about stickers because um, that there's an anti-Clear Lake sticker campaign that the owners have been made the target of. Just going to rise up here quickly, even though that's messed up. There we go. There we go. So... Clown Lake, Free Ring Circus, get them out. We want our Chelsea back. These have been doing the rounds around Stamford Bridge, um, just around the concourse where the fans usually drink before games. And honestly, I don't know why this is a debate. I don't know why people are moaning or feeling any type of way about this because we're 11th. We, we are 11th place in the league in March. I've been saying this for the manager, so why would I not have the same energy for the owners and for the directors? We are in a position that we should not be in, and we've allowed it to fester and rot all season. We are in another season where we are in mid-table. Meanwhile, while this has happened in the two seasons while the owners have been in charge, ticket prices have gone up. Season tickets are rumoured to be going up to about nearly 20%. Um, subsidized travel's gone up. Women's tickets have gone up. Price in the mega store have gone up. Everything at Chelsea has gone up. Meanwhile, we're making the wrong decisions up top. Meanwhile, the team isn't getting any better. Why, why do fans not have the right to voice their dissatisfaction? Why? Why are we now trying to police the fan base? Because I've seen a lot of people trying to complain that, oh, this is the wrong time. Oh, we're being ungrateful and everything. Look I'll, look, I'll agree to a point that Clear Lake out is pointless because they're not going anywhere and they legally can't go anywhere. But if you want to be critical and if you want to demand better of these owners and better of these directors, go for it. Go for it. Because we should be aspiring to be better than where we are. Like, th there is nothing wrong with, with expressing dissatisfaction. If anything, this gives me just a, a shred of belief that we still have some standards in this fan base. Because over the last three, four months, I've heard the most 2020 Arsenal quotes I've heard in my life. Trust the process. Things will get better. It takes time. If a new manager comes in, nothing's going to change. And all of this BS. Like, I don't even think these stickers are a big deal, in all honesty. Like, Match going fans take stickers to games. Even I've got a couple stickers here. We see things they'll never see. I love leaving that around certain away grounds in London because you'll never sing that as always. But I get it. I get the frustration. And I don't get why people don't get it. <laughs> like we're 11th place. What is the discourse about? Be against the owners, be against the directors. Say you don't rate the players, say you don't rate the manager, whatever. We are vastly underperforming. So as of right now, like, basically anybody can get it. I've already said, if your name ain't Gusto, Caicedo, or Palmer, I don't want to hear it. Hell, maybe you could push Jackson in because he's really performed well post-AFCON. Um, but even then, he wasn't great in the first half and he's missed a lot of chances too. So you could give him some criticism as well. You got to keep the standards high at Chelsea. Keep saying standards, standards, standards. We can't sit here and just say, oh, things will get better. Just, just give it time and all of that. No. Like the opportunity was there to show ruthlessness when we lost to Manchester United and, and we should have sat Pochettino then. We haven't done it. These directors and these owners have enabled us to keep rotting in mid table. So 
they can all go out and get the criticism, especially as the prices are rising while the quality of football on the pitch is declining. Who wouldn't be surprised that they're reacting like this? We have already seen this happen weeks ago. Like This is only just coming out because it's the international break and there's not a lot to talk about. And Matt Law saw something that could stir the pot within the fan base. So he's like, let me stir the pot. But th- we've seen this since Brentford. Since even before that, I think there was anti Bowley chance at City away, if I'm correct. Like, let me know in the comment section if I'm wrong. But I don't care if we're in a good run of form or anything, because you could use that same argument for the manager, and I'm not going to do that. So I'm not going to give that same energy for the owners either. We are 11th. We shouldn't be 11th. We, I don't think we've been in the top seven all season. Things need to change. And things need to change fast. So hopefully this puts a little bit of pressure on them. But other than that, there wasn't any real news out for today. There was a little bit on Conor Gallagher. Um, I saw Team Talk try to say that um, Gallagher is demanding over 150k a week from the Blues. But Fabrizio has just deaded all of that by saying Chelsea are deciding what to do with Gallagher by taking FFP into account. Also, Gallagher asking for too high wages is not accurate. He's not asking for crazy money or anything unreasonable, which if that is the case, then I'm guessing maybe the arguments about, um, what's it called? Contract length. Maybe you don't want to sign an eight year contract on low wages. And if that's the case, fair enough. Give him less years. Like I think the last contract we offered to Mount was a one year deal at like 200 K a week or something. Again, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Who's to say we can't offer Gallagher a low contract with wages that we can all agree on? And if he performs to it to a higher level, maybe he can renegotiate for higher. Because I don't mind Gallagher staying. I just don't think he should be starting for us. I've said that all season. If he was to re-sign, I'm not going to cry about it. If he was to leave, I'm also not going to cry about it. So it just goes both ways with a pair of them. But... I don't think there's much more to this except him dwe- um, just cancelling that story from Fraser Fletcher and Team Talk yesterday, which I didn't really believe in the first place because I'd be surprised if Gallagher was going to ask for more than 150k. And if he is, he's straight deluded. He's just like Mason Mount. But I feel like he would accept less. I do feel like he would accept less. So we have to see how this story pans out. There's not going to be a lot of time to try and sell him after the season's done because Southgate's not going to let him go for sale or be in any sort of negotiations during the Euros. And there's that rumor still going around that we need to sell players by June the 30th. So maybe we try to push to sell him early. Maybe you see a string of other players leave early and we try to get rid of of Gallagher around July. Maybe he resigns. I don't know. We have to wait and see. But let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always. It's been good to be back. Should be streaming sometime tomorrow or the weekend. So keep a lookout for that. And as always, big up to everybody that's locked in. Like, subscribe, and potch out.